Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about the live object model. And what this is, is it's basically a map for all the places that you could possibly go within a live set. And so if you think about the live set as kind of a, a forest, although it's a really <laughs> kind of crazy forest because things are moving around all the time, um, you would have the live object model as kind of a map of all the possible paths that could go through this forest. Now, not all these paths are going to be available at all times, but I feel like that's a really good metaphor to kind of try to understand what exactly we're going to be doing, especially in this tutorial. If you look at uh, what we have on the screen right now, we have a section of the live object model, and I'm going to link to the, uh, the page where you can find all this. And you can see that it has all these big boxes, which are known as classes. So these are kinds of big pieces of the live object model. And then it has these little uh, arrows which go through the metaphorical forest uh, and lead us to different places. And the way that it's, um, it's organized here, you have these uh, arrows, which means that there's really only one uh, op option coming out of it. And then you have these little forked dealies, which are going to show that there's actually going to be multiple um, responses to this. So multiple possibilities. So what that means in practice is that you're never going to really have, or I mean, maybe you will have one track, but you can see that the tracks has a little bit of a fork in it. And that way you can um, find different tracks within a live set. Okay. So let's just go ahead and go through a hypothetical situation. So let's say, for example, we're trying to find a clip and this is a, an extremely, you know, common thing to want to do, I'd imagine, because most of us are trying to do things with clips. And most of this uh, tutorial is going to be talking about clips because that's a very common thing to want to find, right? So we're trying to find this clip. And let's just say it's it's clip, uh, uh, a specific clip. So um, clip one, something like that. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to try to navigate to this clip. And we're always going to start at the upper left, okay? And um, like I said, this is a subsection live object model. There's actually a few different uh, entrances, but the live set is the most common one that we're going to be dealing with in this tutorial. So to get from this to this, from point, um, oh, I probably should have made this point two, point two, from point one is something of a maze. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to go in through song, and right here, we're going to have to figure out uh, which way we're going to go. Now, going to view is not going to really do it for us. It's going to be a lot more complicated. So the most common way is to go down here through the tracks, and then we'll specify a specific track, and we'll see that a little bit later. And then once we get through tracks, we're going to go down to clip slots, meaning the different slots where the clips can live, go through clip slots, and arrive finally at our clip, okay? And there's... This is one way to do it, but you'll see, if you've been watching closely, there's actually another way to do it, which is to go down through scenes, across through clip slots, and to the clip again. So there's not just one um, way to access this clip, this fictional clip that we're talking about. There's actually a couple, and um, there's usually um, uh, benefits and drawbacks to going each way. The most important thing to think about is that there's actually usually more than one path, but it's just that we have to find the path. That's the important part. So... Basically, what we're trying to do with the live object models, we're trying to find our way someplace, and once we get there, we need to tell Max for Live what to do. So basically, Max needs two pieces of information from us. It needs to know where it's going, and it needs to know what to do when it gets there. And that actually corresponds to the two objects we're going to be talking about today, which is live.path and live.path object. And you can think about this as corresponding to these two parts of um, of the way that Max for Live integrates with Ableton. So now that we have a quick overview of that, we might want to just go into the, uh, the live set and I'll show you exactly how to put this into action. So first of all, let's just go ahead and open this Max MIDI effect. And we're going to just get it to be a little bit on the bigger side here. And we're going to press Command E to enter edit mode. And all this stuff right here, you don't really need it. Okay, so let's just delete all this. All right, give ourselves some room, huh? Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna put in these two objects that I discussed uh, previously. I'm just gonna press N, start typing, get one with a live path, and one with dun, 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 live object, okay? So those are our two objects that are pertinent to our our, our lives right now, okay? So I'm going to show you uh, another little um, tip for monitoring right now is what, what we can do instead of uh, having a print object like we normally do, like we did before to go to this max window, we can actually just have a um, 
a message object. So go ahead and press M and you should get this little message object. And this will allow us to just kind of look at um, look at the output of these different objects within the window without having to go back and forth between the, the uh, console window, which is so difficult, <laughs> okay? So I'm gonna make another one of these and we're gonna use this message object just to send commands into this, um, this uh, object live path right here. And in this case, we're gonna want to um, go ahead and type in go to live set. Okay, so if you remember um, in the live object model little uh, diagram, the, the place that you enter is the live set. There's a couple of places to enter. Uh, live app um, is another one and control services is another one. But we're gonna be focusing on the live set here because that's how we're gonna be getting to a lot of the really uh, cool stuff that we want to mess with usually, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and press go to live set. I'm just gonna pipe that uh, message down into live path. And you're gonna wanna use this message object anytime you wanna give a command to um, one of these objects. So if you mouse over it, you can see that it has all these different um, messages that it can possibly uh, possibly find or possibly can receive, right? So one of them is go to, etc. So now if I mouse over the bottom ones, we'll have, you can see that there's these three different outlets and um, they're kind of different. So you wanna pay attention here. Live path is going to follow the object you can see. Live path, uh, this middle one the in of live path is gonna follow the path. And this last one is going to be all the rest. It's gonna dump everything out that we, um, that is neither uh, uh, the ID here or the ID here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and look at what we have. Bam, 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 follow the path. And now I'm going to exit edit mode and I'm gonna press this message button and you can see I get an ID number here. Now, a little explanation is warranted here. So an ID number is basically the way in which uh, Max assigns a fixed number to each little piece of live and um, all those little bifurcations in, in, the, in the, uh, the live object model or the nodes actually, um, that's, those can all be assigned uh, IDs. So every time, and the reason that it does this is so that it kind of has a fixed way to reference, Max has a fixed way to reference these little parts in the live set. So that really, really makes a difference. So we want these ID numbers because this ID number is going to give us a hook into the live set and allow us to do a whole bunch of uh, modifications on it. So you can see that we have uh, an ID is this whole live set is gets the ID of one. So if we do anything with the ID of one, pass the, the ID of one to live object, well, we'll be able to manipulate the whole set. But we don't necessarily want the whole set. We might want something more specific. So we can just keep on adding to this list here. So let's go ahead and type in live set tracks and let's do zero. Okay, we'll go ahead and exit a uh, edit mode by pressing command E again. I'm gonna click this. And remember when I click, whenever I click these message buttons, it's gonna send that message to the, uh, whatever the uh, outlet is. So I'm gonna go ahead and press it again. And you can see I have ID of two, right? So now that is going to be this uh, first track here. And you might notice, wait, up here it says track zero. And in my live set, there is no such thing as track zero. It's actually impossible. Well, the reason that is is because max is what we call zero index which means that it starts counting at zero as opposed to one so humans count start counting at one that's why live which has to interface with humans starts counting at one but uh since max is dealing in computer brain language it only does it it starts uh, at zero so that's uh, explains that that difference okay so let's say though that we try to get assign an id to um let's say track two which doesn't exist so just go ahead and try that. Go ahead and uh, enter edit mode again. Increase this like so. Tracks one. Press this and you see the ID goes to zero. And so whenever we get an ID of zero, it means that the, the object we're looking for just doesn't exist, okay? So the good thing about this is it fails uh, quiet, quietly. It doesn't cause some big fuss. The computer doesn't explode. You just get an ID of zero. So that allows you to sort of feel things out in your patches if you need to do so. All right, so let's go ahead and enter uh, these tracks again. And let's just go ahead and just get more specific. So and that's a uh, track zero, meaning this track. Let's go ahead and check out clip slot. Ooh, clip slot. Wow, cannot type. Clip slot. And clip slot of one, which is going to remember the second clip slot here. And then clip. 
and that should give us this right here. Let's go ahead and try this one more time. Oh, something has gone wrong, right? So let's go ahead and see what's happening. Just so you can see that problem there actually arose because I didn't pluralize uh, clip slots. And this is the kind of thing that will really start to get annoying if you don't if you don't pay attention to it. And the reason, and there's actually a, a convention that I just wasn't paying attention to, which is that um, things wherein uh, there's going to be multiple of them are always going to be uh, pluralized. And so that in clip slot, there's never just one clip slot. So it's always clip slots. So it seems weird because in English, we wouldn't say, oh, tracks zero, you'd say track zero, um, and clip slot zero, clip slot one. But in, in the live object model, you have to do, when there's going to be array an array of things, just meaning multiple things, we got to make sure that it's pluralized. So it has clip slots one clip like so. Okay, so if I press this guy, I get ID three. All right, very good. Now that we can navigate to that little guy, let's see what we can do, uh, how we can affect this clip. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, instead of uh, piping this ID into this little message box, let's go ahead and pipe it into the right input of the live object. And so this is gonna, you're gonna see this quite a bit, okay? And what this is gonna do is it, it's going to uh, take this ID number and pipe it into this live object. And this pair is very, very uh, common. It's very uh, useful pair of objects. And in fact, you very rarely do things with just path. You usually do it with path and object together. So let's go ahead and check this out. So now that we have this here, let's go ahead and try to pass some commands to the, to the objects. So remember that the object is going to tell live what to do or max for live what to do. Live path is going to be where to do it. Objects me what to do. So let's go ahead and press M, like so. And let's do a really normal one called fire. And what that's going to do is it's going to fire this clip, which is a pretty useful thing to want to do, right? So let's go ahead. I'm going to press this, which is going to send this command into live path. It's also going to send out the ID number. And then I'm going to press call fire, and you should see this clip fire. There we go. Okay. And the opposite of that is going to be. You guess it calls stop, like so. Uh huh. So I could also just connect this, exit edit mode, call stop. So call fire, call stop. And you're like, well, what if I wanted to do it on the next clip? Well, there's another way to do that. Just go ahead and edit this up here, make this clip slot two. Call fire. Like so, and then call stop. And so you can see that taking effect right here. Okay, well, that's really useful, and that's uh, all good and fine, and I'm sure we're all very happy with ourselves right now. Let's just look at some of this other stuff that we can do. So one that I really like to do is I like to, uh, you can actually get the color of the clip. That might be useful, right? So let's go ahead and say get color. All right, pretty useful. Let's go ahead and do one of these guys. And we're gonna actually need to put some output here because this uh, get color is going to send, it's gonna give us a little bit of output so that we can actually get the color. Cause it's not gonna return the color um, anywhere in the set, right? It has to return it somewhere. So we gotta give it somewhere to go. So I'm just gonna do it into another little, one of these little messages. So let's go ahead and get color and you see color crazy number, right? <laughs> Pretty youthful, right? So let's go ahead and do something a little bit more fun Let's actually set the color. And I don't really know that much about colors, but let's just do a cut set color zero because I lay money that that is black, right? Let's go ahead and do that. And if I press this, you can see that it changes the clip color. So I can set the clip color from here. I can get the color. I can fire the clip. I can call the clip to stop. So all this is really, already we're doing a lot of really useful stuff. And you can see how this can be really useful when you're trying to make some sort of cool um, clip, fi clip firing type stuff. And um, firing clips is such an important part of live. This is where I decided to focus the beginning of the introduction to the live object model. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of the overview of what live path does and what live object does and how they interact a little bit. But And next what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to make a little bit more of a sophisticated um, 
clip firing or clip launching matrix, okay? So we're gonna do a clip launching matrix that's gonna change the color of the clips according to whether or not they've been played or not, whether or not they're playing, stuff like that, okay? So we're gonna go a little bit more deep into that in the next tutorial, but this is just to give you a little bit of ta uh, taste of the live object model, all right? So go ahead and chew on that and I will talk to you guys soon.